I'm sorry, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Wait, that I couldn't wash off. I didn't think cuddling automatically meant it to turn sexual. I didn't know it was an invitation. I wasn't going to push him off in front of everyone. He took it a step further in front of everyone, all because he assumed things. But she got up and got back over and over again, right? Yes, she did. Like, is this not completely retarded? I was there! Three weeks! After Katie was assaulted by George Lafayette for four weeks or whatever, and she cried in my arms! This 19-year-old girl, 18-year-old girl, she cried in my arms! You're supposed to do the, uh... With no lyrics. My friend cried in my arms about this, and you were on stream denying it all, denying the hurt that you caused to her. You are disgusting people. You and all of your abuse sympathizer friends. You are all horrible. Seriously, you are so. Dream just released a live 40-minute Twitter space talking about George not found in the allegations with Kaidi, 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 Kaidi. It's all true. George isn't a bad person. I care about people. Eventually started crying, entered the Twitter space, and deleted it. What's going on? New rape review on this dream orbiter George not found. You will get mad. Hi, chat. Destiny, do you feel you tried to get a bit too quantitative with how you handle boundaries and social interactions? This seems like something you could just go with vibes on. I don't know what the list gains. It reminds me of you talking about people pushing past your boundaries and past. Uh, no, I just, I, it's, I just, the more I do online stuff and the more that I associate with people, um, this has kind of been my my mode of operating for the past like couple years, especially as I've gotten bigger. It's the, what I'm trying to think. Okay, that's my my dream, my goal, the hope. Okay, it's on, we're on some ultra soy shit, okay? The hope is that like good and truth will prevail, okay? That as long as you're being truthful and as long as you're a decently good person, that that will show in the long term. However, I have to be able to demonstrate that. So I can't let people have fake stories or fake narratives that there's no counter narrative out about. So if I blacklist somebody, there needs to be a good reason for it and I need to be able to immediately point to it so that somebody can't lie about it. And so hopefully over time when people do lie about it, so for instance, when Fuentes lies about like not deplatforming people, like I can point to, you know, like, oh no, like look, here's him tweeting and spam reporting people, you know, trying to get people banned or whatever. So I think that it's, I think that being truthful is important, but you also, being truthful is important, but then you also need the perception of being truthful, meaning that you have to illustrate how you're being truthful. So that's the point of like trying to keep shit in writing and then like providing like links and sources for stuff basically, yeah. Thirty minutes, bro. This, you've got five minutes to pull me in on this. I wanted to talk to you guys about something today. Um, I apologize, because <laughs> it'll probably be a bit hard. Less than three. <sighs> um. I won't have um, the chat on the screen because I can't read it right now. I also turned off all the alerts so I could talk. I'm sorry. I didn't think I would cry. Um, funny enough, I wrote I wrote it down because I didn't think <laughs> I thought I would. Just have as it. a quick refresher, okay? Remember, the reason why we go public about this stuff, the reason why quote unquote Me Too okay, exists, is because it was really, really, really hard to hold some people accountable, all right? So people would be like mass raping people or using sex as a bargaining chip against people. They had a lot of power over stuff like this and there was no way to hold them to account. The legal system didn't do anything. Nobody in the industry was doing anything. It was just horrible. And then as a last resort, basically, well, fuck it. I'm gonna go public and see who else um, has had these issues as a warning to other people. That was the point of this. Um, it's not... It's not supposed to be an inter. Uh, it's not supposed to be an area where you just get to vent your frustrations, even if somebody does something bad. It's not supposed to be like, oh, like I'm just gonna complain about bad stuff that's happened to me, or somebody did something bad. Now I don't know what this is, but we'll see. You know. Anything to say? You know, I thought I'd freeze up when I went live, which I kind of have, but I didn't think I'd cry. Um, I wrote down what I want to say on stream today. I hope that's okay, um, because I get really anxious when talking about important things um and i don't want to miss say anything and i want to make sure that i'm saying everything i want to and in order to do that i wrote it down last night 
There's a massive difference between what Destiny just said and the Jonah Hill X situation where she outed him for being a bad boyfriend because, wait, I don't know if you think I defended or didn't defend that, but the jo I hope I didn't at the time. I don't know why she leaked anything. Um, that was really weird and cringe. I don't know why she leaked anything about Jonah Hill. I thought it was stupid. Um, because I knew I would be like this. Um, and I knew I wouldn't be able to talk properly. So, I probably won't, I, again, apologize. I probably won't look up um, during the stream. I'll be reading on my phone. Um, but I wanted to read this instead of tweet it because I wanted it to come from me. And I want you guys to hear it from me. It's really hard for me to talk about, but I feel like it's important for other people to hear it. I'm sorry, I'm scared. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I guess axe murderer, multi-level rapist, um, extremely powerful industry figure with multiple women under his thumb. That's where that's where my mind is right now. If we're scared to talk about this, it has to be said. We're trying to help other people. That's what my mind is prepped for. Okay. Whew. All right. I'm going to start reading. Shit, my yeah, <laughs> necromancer, maybe. Yeah. I look a fucking mess. Um, okay. I want to start this by saying I wouldn't be here without Shelby. I was ready to disappear with this secret forever. I never knew that creators were allowed to talk about these kinds of things, and I guess I'm still new to it all. I just didn't feel brave enough, and I still don't, but her strength made me feel like it may be okay. A little while ago, my story had almost been leaked without me knowing, so here it is on my terms. Here's my story. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. I was <laughs> My last lunch period was only 74 days ago. Okay. Dunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened. He was someone I had once watched and he was eight years older than me and far more powerful. Does the age or the power have anything to do with this? We'll see. Let's find out. Hold on. I'm so proud of you and your bravery. The full story is quite short. It was at a convention in a hotel room. It was my first convention I was invited to, so I stuck by one of my best friends the entire time. Why make fun of an assault victim? Destiny, why do you do this? Because there's no reason for this stuff to be online. If you're presenting it publicly, it's for us to evaluate. So if it's stupid, of course I'm gonna laugh at it. You don't get to just dump shit like this online and expect infinite validation because it just encourages the next person to do this. This shit is stupid. Well, this might not be stupid. I don't know this story yet, okay, to be clear. So far the loading on all of it sounds really dramatic and dumb, but we'll see. It might be serious. I don't know. I don't fuck all about any of this, okay? But this might, there might be a good reason I have this online. But so far, like, something that I've said, ah, oh, I hate repeating these lines every single time. Something I've said over and over again, something that got lost somewhere in the online discourse is red flags are not black flags. Red flags are not auto no's or auto bads, okay? That doesn't, that's not an automatically bad thing. A red flag just means a thing to be aware of. That's all it means. An age difference is just a thing to be aware of. Power differences are just things to be aware of, okay? That's it. It doesn't automatically mean no. Every single relationship has power dynamic differences. Every single one. Um, the idea that it's like, he was eight years older than me. That's only relevant if he used that eight years of age or they were so much more powerful. That's only relevant if that came up. So for instance, like if, um, let's say that a, oh, how hyperbolic do I wanna be? Let's say that a, a celebrity meets with a fan and hooks up with them. And then let's say the celebrity rips the fan, okay? Even in that situation, there's not necessarily an abuse of power. You would have to figure out what the interaction looked like. It might just be a now, let's say that the people were chatting, they met up, they were in a hotel and like, oh yeah, cool, let's hook up, blah, blah, and then they do that and then the guy rips or whatever, tragic and horrible, but like not necessarily an abuse of power. Let's say that the guy um, was was chatting with her, she was like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm gonna meet up, I'm not sure I feel about this, and the guy's like, okay, but hey, I'm your favorite YouTuber, I'm your favorite singer, like don't you wanna have a chance to hang up, blah, blah, blah. That is an abuse of power, right? In one sense, both both things have like the red flag of it being like a celebrity and a fan, but in only one of the cases of the red flags did he actually act on or abuse that power difference to the person. Just because something bad happens doesn't mean it happened because of all the other things that are there. It, like, yeah, it's just this, yeah. Ugh. I was nervous but excited about it all and felt really grown up. One night we were at a house party when we decided to leave. It was me, my best friend, and her other friend. His other friend was romantically talking to a really big creator at the time. He was also the best friend of my soon-to-be assaulter. She wanted to go back to his hotel room, but then was romantic. On. One night, we were at a house party when we decided to leave. It was me, my best friend, and her other friend. This might be pedantic, but I think you're describing yellow flags because I've always understood red flags to be stop. I think these people can use yellow flags. I've never heard the term yellow flag in my life. 
I've always heard red flag and red flag is generally always meant just be careful. Like big age gap, oof, that's a red flag, be careful. I've never heard red flag to mean completely stop and go no further. Like, oh, uh, you know, mommy issues, red flag, or oh, this thing, red flag, you know, they're poor, they've got a lot of credit card debt, that's a red flag. I've never heard that being like a red flag is like, stop completely, don't go to, red flag is just like, oh shit, that's the thing to be careful of, be aware of, but. It all and felt really grown. Right. It was my first convention I was invited to, so I stuck by one of my best friends the entire time. I was nervous but excited about it all and felt really grown up. One night we were at a house party when we decided to leave. It was me, my best friend, and her other friend. This other friend was romantically talking to a really big creator at the time. He was also the best friend of my soon to be assaulter. She wanted to go back to his hotel room but didn't want to go alone, so we went with her. I didn't really mind as I was up for anything. When we got to the hotel room, it was the creator, the girl was talking to, and his best friend. The two of them and the three of us. Not much happened that first night, just some drinking and talking at a table. The guy's friend had been passing flirts at me the entire night, but because he was the oldest in the room, we assumed he didn't know my age. Later that night, how old was he again? 26 and she's 18? Because, like, what are we talking about here? So because he's 26 and he's flirting with an 18 year old, he must not know your age? Why would you, like, this is some crazy online shit. Why would you assume that a 26 year old wouldn't f an 18 year old? Why would you assume that? 27? Even if they were 30, even if they were 40. If you're in an area, you're drinking with people, hanging out. If you're, as long as you're legal, why would you assume, at least for fucking, that the guy wouldn't want to fuck you? That's all, we're already off on like a weird, like autistic foot, but okay. When I left, I received Instagram DMs from him. And in my Instagram bio in bold was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. A few days passed when I found myself in the same, same situation. Us three were at a party when it got boring and whether the girl wanted to leave and go to his room or he asked us who I cannot remember. Once again, I was drunker than the night before and was willing to go anywhere. I was naive and so we went back. I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby on the way. They were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and it was an eerie feeling, like they could sense something was wrong. And I wonder what would have happened if I had picked up on it and if I wasn't drunk and if I didn't wave it off. But I don't want to dwell on what ifs. That night I went up to his room, back at the hotel room again, were the two friends and us three girls. At the time, at the time, all of us girls were already really drunk from the party we were coming from, stumbling and everything. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games and, already drunk, I obviously completely complied. We sat on the couch and answered questions about each other, drinking a bunch, and the older guy sat right next to me while playing. I confused my nerves for excitement, as I'd never been around such a big creator before. I remember getting drunker and drunker and really tired around this time. It was about 3 a.m. Right before the incident, I had answered a question about my age. We were playing a drinking game and talking about sex. And I admitted to everyone in the room that I was 18 and that I was a virgin at the time. I remember back now. Do you think this shit is getting genuinely out of control or might cause a cultural pendulum swing against women? Uh, you want my, do you want my ultra, do you want my ultra scolding hot take? Um, I don't remember if I've given it before. Probably not because we shut our women so much here. The ultra scolding hot take is, especially if you're a famous guy, I can't tell who I want to be more upset with. The dipshit women that like do these weird accusation public things or the retarded f guys that push, 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 push. It can't just be a little bit fucking chill. If you're a big YouTuber, you're a big whatever, why the f do you need some girl wasted at 3 a.m. who looks like she's a f***ing teenager to f*** her? Why not just like wait until she wakes up? Why not chat with her outside of her being drunk? Or why not just like somebody else like close to your own age? Like, now, on one end, it's dumb that these girls do this shit and blah, blah, blah. But then another, it's like, bro, you're so famous. I know you've got a million girls in your DMs. I've got a million girls in my DMs. I know you do. Why do you have to do weird shit like this? Um, I don't... <sighs> yeah, I will say this, okay? Clip me. Get ready to clip me in case I get accusations in the future, okay? I, in case I get accused of raping someone in the future. I don't believe it when guys are like, oh, I'm so afraid of getting me too'd. Oh, I'm so afraid of like a girl making... Bullshit. That's because you're rapey and you're creepy and you're weird just stop slow the fuck down you're 26 you got a billion followers on youtube you could probably fuck more girls and your entire family line your ancestral history combined okay if you spend like two weeks active on instagram just slow the fuck down jesus christ but then the girls are also retarded too but like yeah gee, everybody's just so stupid fuck. game and talking about sex and i admitted to everyone in the room that i was 18 and that i was a virgin at the time I remember back now to him answering questions during the game about back when he was 19 and when he was in college, noticing how my future was his past. And I wondered how he felt sitting so close to me. Like this shit is all, this is rehearsed, scripted. She probably sat down with four friends, like my future was your past. I was like, ooh, that's a good line. That'll hit well. Make sure you're not doing the crying thing when you deliver that line or like sniff afterwards or whatever. Like, oh, that's a good, like this is so, cri like unless you fall on racer, okay? I see people in chat saying you just touch her. I don't know. But now if there's like a full on like hardcore rip, okay. But like, Jesus. It was a little after that when I resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people, the fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. 
I was scared and I felt sick, either from the alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. I was scared to leave or make a scene out of the embarrassment. Eventually, later in the night, I found myself alone with him and his friends. Everyone else either passed out or sick. I dread the scenarios that could have played out that night, the what ifs. I was just so naive and lucky or not, the night came to an end with just that. The night lasted until 6 a.m. I was still drunk, either from- Okay, so now the next day something more is gonna happen? From alcohol or tiredness. I went to leave and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get an elevator to prove it was broken. And then after a few minutes, he ended the night with a guess I'm going now, leaving with a wounded puppy look. He proceeded to Instagram message me for a bit after that, simple flirting or asking about the next convention I was going to, saying stuff about seeing me there. Simple messages ultimately filtered into nothing. At the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that that had happened to me. I was excited to be around such big creators, to be at that convention in general. I figured that's just how things were, that that was the price I had to pay to be there, that anyone would have loved to be in my position, and that I should have appreciated it. <laughs> it was what were the DMs looking like afterwards? Did those get leaked, or...? First, that night. Like, why are we leaking this? Like, you are lucky. <laughs> You're lucky that that was the only thing that happened. This is like, this is such a lucky lesson learned. Like, okay. I was underage, drinking. I was already pretty dumb. Probably shouldn't go back to the hotel room with some guys alone. Some guy kind of like felt me up a little bit, but nothing happened and then I left. That is a lucky scenario. That's lucky. Nothing happened. You're good. Like, holy shit. What an easy way to learn a lesson without anything fucking insane happening. Wait, what the fuck? It was the first time anyone had ever touched me. <laughs> I should, I, sh I assured myself that I was just being sensitive about it all. That it wasn't a big deal, but assuring only can go so far. I felt dirty in a way that I couldn't wash off. Bro, where, where did she get the, the what, what rape diary was she reading? Like, oh, I felt dirty in a way that could never come. I could never be clean again. Like, who gave her this language? There's no way she's writing that. Like, bro, come on, really? I couldn't help the way that my body reacted and flinched. Part of me still wanted to feel cool about it all, to convince myself I was lucky so I didn't have to think about it. I would reimagine the scenario in my head, replaying it again and again, what I could have done, what I could have said instead, but it didn't matter. None of it did, because he never asked, and that fact would never change, no matter how hard I thought about it. I changed after that. I believed life wasn't fair, I was naive, and maybe sometimes to a fault, but I could only wish it lasted longer. I miss not knowing. I used to be kind. I'm angry a lot of the time now at that person, at myself, at the fact that a year later, I can feel my heartbeat stop at the sight of him, and he probably couldn't even make out my face in a crowd. I can't stop thinking about who I was before it all, who I'll never be again. And how some things you can't undo no matter how- Who will never be again? Hard you try. I never said anything out of pure embarrassment. I was embarrassed it happened, and I was afraid to look weak or just- I hate that I'm getting a little jaded from things like this. The way these happen are a little pattern of public theory allegations, people being weird, then finding out what happened wasn't that serious. It wasn't- Sure, but like, okay, here, hold on, okay? Gotta keep in mind a couple things. Everything in the online world is different than everything in the real world, okay? All of this is like so much different, okay? Because like in the real world, what'll happen is like this story, except like the girl actually gets roofied and actually gets raped and doesn't tell anybody because she feels embarrassed or humiliated about it or she's not even sure if you want it. There's like everything in the real world is, wait a minute, this is some online like farming communities because they're all full of like 15 year olds. And honest to God, I'm here's what I'm waiting to happen. I'm waiting for a story to come out where like a 19 year old girl comes out crying and just recounts a story where she had fully consensual sex with a 21 year old guy and he still gets canceled for it. Like I just, she's like, yeah, we hooked up and I said yes and I did consent the whole time, but he was two years older than me and then we fucked and I, all I can think about is that day where we had consensual sex and I said it the whole time and then like I just can't I don't know what it, my life is ever gonna be like again and I, we had like I'm just like what what is he what are you even talking about here show that it hurt me but I realize now that I don't think being hurt makes you weak I think it's strong to feel things that have hurt you and then to still choose to feel nonetheless like why are we write also the poetry is so cringe why are we writing poetry or it's prose like why are we writing slogans and shit after our horrific grope experience like a grubbing of her thigh? I think it's strong to feel things that have hurt you and then to still choose to feel nonetheless. I was scared to speak out because I thought it was my fault and that I didn't deserve to. I was scared of him and all of those who surrounded him. I was scared of his power. I was scared I was mistaken, remembering wrong. <laughs> I hoped I was remembering wrong. <laughs> I was scared to go to any more conven conventions on the chance that I'd see him again. I never thought I'd be strong enough. To me, the worst thing here was people serving her alcohol under 21. Knowing she was 18 seems lame, but uh, I have no idea 
Uh, I have no other idea why her being 18 matters outside of that. Listen, if you're a young person and you're listening to me, here's like the one piece of advice that I can give you, okay? Here's the one thing that I can say that is absolutely true. And if you're 20 or younger, you're gonna disagree. And if you're 21 or older, you're gonna know what I mean, okay? There are two types of parties once you get to college, okay? There are 21 and older parties, and then there are lame as fuck parties with creepy dudes. Those are the only two types of parties with alcohol in them, okay? If there is a party where a bunch of young people are drinking, one, nobody cool is at that party because nobody wants to be with a bunch of fucking uh, underclassmen or people that are under 21 that shouldn't even be drinking, number one. And number two, all the guys that are there hitting on the young girls know that and they're creepy weirdo losers, okay? I know that feels hard to imagine when you're 18 or 19 and you feel like when you're going to a party and it's so cool because there's older people there, blah, 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 okay? Those people are usually weirdos. Be careful of that, okay? Just saying. Be aware of that. To talk about it or for what my In America. I don't know. I can't speak to other countries, by the way. I'm just speaking for the United States, okay? I'm haunted by him everywhere. In usernames, profile pictures, in my own past. I lost the passion. Destiny. The reason guys are aggressive is that women like it. Why don't you talk about that more? Um, young women, we can borrow from the wise Jordan Peterson here. Um, young women are retarded. They think they like super aggressive, cocky, um, asshole type behavior, but that's not true. What they really want is a lot of confidence coupled with uh, a lot of like empathy and safety, but that's hard to tease out when you're a young person. And then on the flip side, guys will be retarded because girls are retarded and they'll think, oh, I just need to be super fucking aggressive because girls like that, but that's not true. Girls like a lot of confidence, but also paired with a lot of empathetic safety, right? So I can be very aggressive, very mean, very rude, but I'm never gonna push the line and I'm not gonna make you feel unsafe. That's technically what women are looking for, but when they're young, they don't realize it, and the young guys also don't realize it, so a bunch of retarded shit happens. I once had for content, for anything really. The association never went away. All the years I spent creating this community felt like a waste because of one night. I didn't even want to log onto this app. So maybe women should talk to girls about that. I think women do talk to girls about that, but I don't know if men talk to boys about that. I think that women, I think that older women, I'm stereotyping a lot here, but it feels like, Older women talk to younger women and they say things like, be careful for like bad guys or these guys will do this or blah, 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 even though they're attractive. But it feels like when I think of like red pill spaces talking to young men, they'll just say what you guys said. Oh, women like it when guys are aggressive or when they're assholes or when they do those things. That's not really true. That's, unless you're talking about a specific type of weird woman. Over something that I never asked for. I can't help but feel angrier all the time. Seeing the love I'd once had for creation before it happened. I tried to forget it all and ignore it until it resurfaced as, resurfaced as a fresh cut. I remember a moment around October where I made a comment about a certain group abusing power over minors in their DMs, saying they had minors in their DMs. It was an absent-minded comment, and I apologize for it, of course. It was a possible subconscious jab out of my Older own. women do not like soft men, period. Yeah, but also nobody likes a guy that pushes boundaries and is creepy or weird, or rapey. Personal resentment. My comments filled with people saying that I didn't care about grooming victims, and that I thought assault was a joke. And I remember sitting there, reading the comments, scrolling over and over again, heart beating faster. Over half of the comments had him as their profile picture. <laughs> Oh I just God. wanted to die. I was embarrassed of myself and I was angry and I wanted to fucking ever find peace. Hey, Destiny, how does it make me creepy or rapey that I don't want to be accused of being a creep at the gym? For example, yesterday I was on the cycle. The girl was in front of me, felt scared. I don't believe you. I don't think this happens to normal people. If it does, it's incredibly rare. I don't think that's, I don't think that happens. You're, you're probably a rapist, my dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, embrace it. Okay. Hire a good defense attorney. You're going to need one. You're probably just a rapist. All right. The idea of will I ever heal? It's scary. But I was tired of withholding my story to protect myself. I spent so long convincing myself it was my fault or that I was just a coward. I just wanted to disappear, but I didn't because I realized that this is a problem bigger than me. It may sound dramatic, but it's how I felt for over a year. I feel everything very strongly and I don't want that to change. I agree with your take about how women who can't assert boundaries in what should be safe environments, though feels like there's a double edge there and that mirrors should be given for men. If you're too fucking retarded till a woman is uncomfortable or not receptive to what you're doing, you shouldn't fuck either. Yeah, maybe. I think the difficulty, the, 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 the difficulty in this is that like when women make mistakes, they get raped, so they're the victim. And when men make mistakes, they're rapists, so they're like the aggressor. And that's just an unfortunate pairing of how the sexual dynamics tend to work in society. So it sucks because technically they're both making a very similar mistake, um, but because of, because of how the, our sexual dynamics play out, um, yeah, guys just kind of get the short end of the stick on that. But also women have periods and have to carry babies for nine months, so, you know. It was a big deal to me. 
and I spent too much time downplaying my own experiences, and I still do. I'm still trying to realize that it's okay. My story is about power and age and consent. It pisses me off that they can hide behind their power while victims are left helpless, no matter what scenario. It pisses me off that he thought he had the right to do what he did, that he did it even in my silence. <laughs> my biggest fears about speaking out was you guys. I wanted to keep my community safe from what may follow, and also, most importantly, from the ugly truth of life. I promise with you guys to be open and honest. This is fucking retarded. Have you ever felt used after a sexual encounter? Um, <laughs> yeah, it has happened before. It doesn't feel good, but I don't give a fuck. Um, okay, what else is here? Is this her? For now, this is what I have to say. He admitted to touching me, that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent. In my mind, the conversation is over. He said silence does not equal consent, yet he never got verbal confirmation from me. He chose to move to a sexual act on the couch where everyone was hanging out without asking. Well, I mean, it sounds like he just touched her thigh. He didn't even touch her pussy, did he? Destiny, it is dramatic, but still fair to come out with it if she thinks it was sexual assault, no? Not saying it was since it depends on his, wait, where was the sexual assault? It sounds like he didn't even touch her actual, that's a response to his response. You're skipping his response. Oh my God. How long is his fucking response? 15 minutes. This is my side of the story of the two times that I- Oh my God. This guy's 27? What? This guy looks like he's 19. If you watch Skibbity Toilet enough, does it like reset your age? Interacted with Katie Bugs in real life. So the first time that I met her, it was in Dream's hotel room at VidCon. To give context about Dream's hotel room, essentially it was a bigger room than average. It's not just a bed in a room, like a typical hotel room is. For this reason, we used his hotel room essentially as a place where all of our friends could hang out in. The first night that I actually met Katie, I was with Dream in his hotel room, and Dream was in a group chat with five other people. These five people include Katie Bug. If the touching is with sexual intention, it can count as sexual assault legally speaking. I don't give a f This is retarded. Hold on. One of the, oh my God. I don't like to, do these conversations every time something like this comes up, okay? If you can get verbal consent all the time, that's good. And I think you probably should if you don't know, if you're autistic or if you, if you even have a question, you should just ask. By the way, never in the history of all of mankind, even though I see dating coaches or red pill, some people will say it's cringe. Never, ever, ever, if a girl is into you, will she ever turn you down because you like ask a question? Also, you don't have to be fucking weird or cringe about it. You don't have to be like, eh, I said, okay, if I lift your shirt and touch your, and touch your, and touch, and touch your stomach here with my fingers. Like, you don't have to be weird. So like, hey, does this feel good? Or hey, are you okay? Like, you can just ask something like really quick like that. It's super easy to check in verbally, okay? But, unfortunately, most people don't do this for whatever fucking reason. But regardless, one of the ways you usually escalate to sexual attention is through some form of touch. It can be touching somebody's arm or shoulder. It can be touching somebody's like um, a belly or waistband is a really big one, right? Usually that's how you build up to it. If the other person seems kind of receptive and you keep going. Now, personally, I think that especially when people are drunk and if you're f***ing autistic and if the other person is a child, probably not like the best way to go that route because communication can get mixed up or whatever. But I wouldn't necessarily say that it's sexual assault to start testing boundaries like that. I don't think that's sexual assault. That's wild. That's a pretty normal part of escalating a physical interaction. Destiny, I am telling the truth. I have social anxiety, so I'm scared of other people at the gym, women or not. Is it just worse with women because of the consequences? Does that not make sense to you? Just don't, as long as you're not, if you're not like staring, most women that go to the gym are just going there to work out and probably take a couple of selfies post on their Instagram. Like, as long as you're just like get on the machine, you do what you're doing or whatever, it's no, no woman is gonna like accuse you of doing anything or being weird. Like it's pretty, I, I, don't, I don't know why this would happen. You're just do your thing and it's probably fine. Just don't like stare at them the whole fucking time. Or if there's like 500 treadmills at a gym and there's one woman on a treadmill and you get on the treadmill right next to her or something, that might be kind of weird, but. Her best friend and three other of her friends. Now, these five people, they're at an official Bitcoin alpha party and they wanted to dream, they wanted dream to go meet up with them and hang out with them. But Dream actually didn't want to hang out with them. And the reason is because at the time he was wearing his dream mask a lot and he felt uncomfortable. Wearing yeah, the problem right now is that there's literally no sunlight between sexual assault and just bad interaction. Or I shouldn't even say, these are like the same thing now. Like basically if a sexual interaction goes a certain way and people didn't like it or weren't happy with it or they just think whatever, um, then you're, it's like sexual assault. That's just so wild. That's such an aggressive position to take and it doesn't leave any room for trial and error or for adolescent exploration, which is really stupid. 
Destiny is avoiding men in the instance you aren't good at standing up for yourself, a valid response. I have trouble telling guys to leave me alone a lot of the time. Um, I mean, like, if you've got issues with that as a woman, bring a friend. That's why you have, like, the cock block friend. Like, if guys are complaining about a certain friend being a cock block or whatever, that's not always a bad thing. You don't have to simp for guys all the time. You could, like, have that friend that does, like, stick up for you if you feel like you have an issue. Also, don't put yourself in situations where you're alone with guys ever. Um, don't get drunk around guys if you feel like you can't, like, control yourself or if you're prone to doing dumb things. Like, yeah, like, these are all just things that you could do to improve your. Uh, rape avoidance strategy. Wearing it was just a whole mask on your face. So he just didn't want to go to the party particularly. He even suggested that they shouldn't come because he was, he was assuming that they were, they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that was I'm not afraid of women accusing me. I'm afraid to make her uncomfortable with my artistic nothing stare. Okay, bring a bring a cane, get some sunglasses, and just act like you're... Look. No, wait. Be like this guy. <laughs> Boomer TV. Go to the gym with the cane and the sunglasses, and then you're good to go. It's called retard maxing. <laughs> Do you think that being less direct slash aggressive is sometimes the less courteous way to act towards women, i.e. just straight up asking a woman if she wants to come home with you rather than slowly testing boundaries is more courteous? Personally, I've always thought straight up asking women if they want to come up with you is creepy as fuck, but I've been told it's more desirable by, desirable by women. I mean, <laughs> you have to find a way to do it without like being too forward, but also without being too um, weird. I feel like we've had this conversation like a million times. I think that if you're asking people want to be, if you want to be straight up, then it's okay, but you have to be straight up while also like giving the other person an out too. So for instance, um, if you're hanging out with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, because women are weak-willed creatures who will say yes to things without necessarily wanting to, okay? Rather than being like, hey, uh, so for instance, if you're driving a girl back after a restaurant, you get in your car afterwards, you say something like, hey, instead of something like, do you wanna come back to my place and hang out? Then you say something like, uh, hey, uh, do you wanna come back to my place and hang out? Or do you have to go home because you've got work in the morning, right? If you give somebody an out so that they feel like they have an option or whatever, like that's a way to do it, but I don't know, listen, figure your own shit out. Want to hang out with them? Just don't fuck anybody, okay? Just fuck your bros, okay? Boom. Guys can't rape other guys. And the reason is because at the time he was wearing his green mask a lot, and he felt uncomfortable wearing it because it's just the whole mask on your face. So he just didn't want to go to the party particularly. He even suggested that they shouldn't come. What if Ghosty and Katie came back with me too? Maybe I don't know what my friends are up to. I'm still at Corn Dogs with some friendos, but leaving shortly. Want to play that game from last night? It might just be us four for a bit at least. We'll make it fun. I don't want to take them away from the party, okay? because he was, he was assuming that they were, they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that wasn't the case. They were bored and they wanted to do it. Are Ghosty and Katie having fun? Not really. Would you be okay if we come over? This is a clip chimp re-upload. They wanted to come. So now these five people um, are trying to come to the hotel. But what happened is Katie and two of her other friends came to Dream's hotel room. This was my first time actually meeting them in real life. I didn't even know who they were before meeting them. And then we essentially just were playing drinking games in the hotel room. We were having fun, talking with each other. Nothing crazy in particular. Now one thing Katie said retrospectively looking back at the scenario is that I was flirting with her throughout the night and that she was uncomfortable with this because of our age difference. At the time she was 18 and I was 26. She actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I'm with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where- Oh God, I don't care. I just super don't care. I linked the original stock me. Okay, I'm sorry. 
This is the, the true test of our vibe answers. Can I actually pay attention to this boring fucking <sighs> counterexample? All right. <laughs> Serious conversation. All ads and donos are turned off. No money's being made from the stream. Stream will start soon. Wow. By the way, good turnout on Chris Williamson. Yeah, his audience fucking hates me. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, hey guys, I want to start off this stream by saying that this stream is completely demonetized. I have turned off ads, I have turned off donations. However, I cannot turn off subs, but uh, just don't sub. But regardless, any sub money that is generated. Really, I thought it was a very good talk. No, yeah, but the pro the ironic thing is that like a lot of his fans are um, they have they suffer from the problems that I identify <laughs> in the uh, in the podcast. Um, hold on, sorry. You talk about performance without. Like, I think you need to adhere to in order to not be awesome. Uh, maybe he's people said he apparently deleted a lot, but like over half the comments are like in reference to like my fucking divorce. And it's like, what? I don't even know what that has to do with this entire video. Oh, I think he did. He might. Oh, I wonder if he did that for my sake or for his sake. <laughs> These comments were way, way, way worse. Jacka Boji, what? Holy shit, I would actually have this woman walk me around with a leash on public. Okay. Okay, never mind. Rip. Please, I defended you in the YouTube comment section of Chris Williams. The trenches were brutal, but I came through for the Dally Band. Yeah, I think the majority of the comments were about, um, actually, I think almost all of them were about just Molina and my divorce. And, oh, and then some people said I was either a contrarian or a wiki warrior. That's a popular one right now. What if I sort by new? Would you prefer a super direct society in dating? Um, maybe. I'm not sure. There's a reason why we're indirect, and being indirect lets you save face a little bit. That might be important for for humans, right? Is to be able to save face a little bit instead of getting directly shot down. What happened to this guy's wife? <laughs> of all the people to say, everyone is getting dumber. Yeah, fuck. All the unhinged comments were in the beginning, but anyway, okay. During the stream, I will donate to charity. In the stream, I'm going to be talking I'm about- I'm going to donate to charity anything that comes from my rape review stream? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Some very serious topics, including assault, abuse, and things of sexual nature. So if any of these are triggering topics for you, please be- Why do you think it's so taboo to be mean towards ignorant victims of minor sexual assault? Uh, I bet we'd have no problem making fun of her if she fell for the Nigerian prince scam. The issue is that it's a reaction. It's a reaction and the reaction is overboard. So now we have to treat every victim like they're a precious fucking angel. But the reason why it's a reaction is because the society prior to this could be a girl goes to a bar to have fun with some friends, ends up getting roofied and raped by like three dudes and everybody is grilling her over why the fuck were you even at a bar in the first place? Or why were you drinking anything? Or why didn't you have like a, a security camera set up 24 seven on your fucking glass? Like that was the issue. The issue before was that the victim blaming stuff of culture was really heavy on the women. Um, it was way too much on the other side. So now the reaction is, well, now we're on the other end where every single time a woman gets touched in a way she doesn't like, she's gonna make like, well, not even every woman too. Keep in mind, this is just like influencer culture shit, yeah. Be aware of that and be cautious. Recently- Do you have any response to people disqualifying your opinion about dating since your divorce? If people don't wanna take my opinions on anything, don't take my opinions on anything, that's fine. But it's ironic that people will write up, first of all, this is my second divorce, not my first one, which is already funny enough. Um, but if you wanna write off my opinions for whatever my personal life looks like, despite the fact that I don't uh, subscribe to my, or I don't tell people to do my personal life, that's fine, knock it out. But it, it, I don't believe that that is what people are writing my opinions off for because they'll follow a bunch of red pillars who aren't married, don't have families, don't have traditional lifestyles, don't date conservative women, uh, don't have, like their lives are just as crazy, if not more so on a personal level than mine, but you have no problem taking all their advice for everything. So I, people are just looking for excuses basically. Yeah, a streamer named Katie Bugs went live and told a story involving me about uh, sexual assault. So in this stream, I'm gonna be addressing it. I was originally planning on doing this all live. Um, and that's why I originally tweeted saying that I would be live the day that it happened but I simply did not feel comfortable doing it live and needed to make sure that I had all the details in place and... Uh, Why do you think we are typically more comfortable with seeing graphic violence than explicit sexual acts in media? Um, I think that sexual acts that are explicit 
Oh, wait, you mean like even consensual sex? I have no idea. Ask my mom. I think it's the opposite in Europe. Just wanted to make sure I was all- Oh, by the way, I do have ads on and I am accepting subscribers and donations. So if you want to make me money and I'm not donating any of it to anything, so. Perfect as it happened. So today I sat down, talked straight into this camera, laid out all my thoughts, and then essentially just edited out the blank spaces where I was sitting here thinking. Okay. Bro, stop fucking pausing the video. Go watch it on your own then, damn. Why the fuck do you need to watch it unedited on my fucking stream? Here. <laughs> Does dating while famous affect na uh, dating negatively at all? Do you ever have a thought in the back of your head like, what if one of my hookups accuses me of sexual assault? Or like, what if I have one convo out of context leak that will make me look like an abuser? I have never worried about that in my entire life. I've hooked up with a lot of people. Never worried about that. That somebody's gonna accuse me of being a fucking rapist. I mean, like, one person already tried to, that lab girl, and I feel like the DMs there were wild. Like, I'm, like, such a cuck in these DMs. Hey, uh, just so you know, if you ever want to come on stream, it's okay. Like, none of our past sexual blah, blah, blah. Like, lab was a million times more aggressive in our fucking messages than I was to her. So, yeah, no, I'm not worried about that shit. That's dumb. Thinking. But maybe if I fuck more Minecraft girls, maybe it would come up. I would say. And then also added some screenshots for context. And I'm gonna be playing that video now. Uh, I'm gonna be telling the whole story, so it might not seem like everything is completely relevant, but I do need to tell. You said that you were a bit scared during the Mr. Girl arc. Yeah, the thing that scared me on the Mr. Girl arc, and I said this, you can go and clip me. It wasn't that somebody would accuse me of being a rapist. It was that four or five girls that I'd like, f that I, cause I don't know if I fuck boyed somebody in the past before, but like a few girls that might've gotten burned or felt like we could have dated and then we didn't, would have like come out with like, yeah, I think he used me for sex. And then that's like the narrative. That's always been the big one that like even Lav has tried to push anyway too. Not that I'm a rapist, but that I like, have like weird sexual masochistic or sadistic fetishes of like pitting women against each other, some autistic shit like this. Well, the whole story for it to make sense and to fully inform you guys. So please watch the video in its entirety before forming opinions as this is very important. Finally, before I play the video, do not send hate to Katie. That is not the goal of this and I do not want you guys doing that. So let's play the video. Okay. See you later guys. Okay, so this is my side of the story of the two times that I ever interacted with Katie Bugs in real life. So the first time that I met her, it was in Dream's hotel room at VidCon. To give context about Dream's hotel room, essentially it was a bigger room than average. It's not just a bed in a room like a typical hotel room is. Essentially, it's uh, there was a living room, there was a table, and the bedroom was kind of separated from it. You can get like suites or like king. Um, uh, it's not. It doesn't have to be a suite or a penthouse. There are other names for these that are like in between. I could look it up, but like yeah, you can get like things with like an extra room and shit. Yeah. And for this reason, we used his hotel room essentially as a place where all of our friends would hang out in. Bitcoin is a four-day-long event, so we actually used it quite frequently for, throughout these four days. And we had creators, friends in and out of this room throughout the whole event. Now. The first night that I actually met Katie, I was with Dream in his hotel room, and Dream was in a group chat with five other people. These five people include Katie Bugs, her best friend, and three other of her friends. Now, these five people- What's your favorite hotel and airline brand? Uh, I just, I use Hilton's because I have points with them. An airline brand? JetBlue is nice, but I'll fly JetBlue, Delta, American Airlines. I just try to avoid like Spirit and Frontier if I can, but it's whatever. An official Bitcoin after party, and they wanted to dream, they wanted Dream to go meet up with them. Wow, the guy Jack, thanks for the gifted 20 subs, my dude. And hang out with them. But Dream actually didn't want to hang out with them. And the reason is because at the time he was wearing his Dream mask a lot and he felt uncomfortable wearing it because it's just the whole mask on your face. So he just didn't want to go to the party particularly. He even suggested that they shouldn't come because he was, he was assuming that they were they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that wasn't the case. They were bored and they wanted to, they wanted to come. So now these five people. Do a Boeing deep dive next. I had a friend, I think I said this a while ago. I had a friend who was in town, a, um, I think a month or two ago. And she told me that like, oh yeah, Boeing 747 Max has crashed a lot or there's some dumb shit. And I thought, it, I just thought she was like exaggerating. Uh, yeah, and I looked this up and the, damn, that Boeing situation is pretty weird. And then I think like two more had had huge problems since then. Like I think the one with the side blew off. I think that was a Boeing 747 Max. I don't know, man. How loaded is this guy? Look at that house from the open door. What the fuck? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to come to the hotel. But the problem with that is, to get into the hotel, you need to have a VidCon creator badge. And only two of the people in the group chat actually had this badge. That was Katie and her best friend. So eventually what happened is Katie and two of her other friends came to Dream's hotel room. Or is it 737 Max? Not 747 Max, sorry. Could it just be that there are a lot of them flying? No, the 737 Maxes were, there was some dumb shit that was inexcusable, at least in the wiki and then a couple of stories I read. This seemed pretty dumb. This was my first time actually meeting them in real life. I didn't even know who they were before me. Destiny, you were applying a double standard earlier, being 18 is seen as a child when the age difference is 26, which is why people would find it weird even though you are also our ageist with 18 to 20 year olds. I don't know what that sentence means. All I'm saying is that the younger the person you're dealing with, the more cautious generally you should be. 
Like if I was hooking, if there was like a 30 year old girl that wanted to hang out uh, and we were like, and she was like, oh, let's go out and get drinks and then maybe we can hook up afterwards. I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure, fine. If there was a 21 year old girl that wanted to like get drinks and hook up afterwards, I'd probably be a little bit more cautious there. I'd be like, okay, well, like what's your level of sexual experience? Like how often you drink? Like that would be just something I'd have like a little bit more caution with. Uh, but then you can also, you can usually tell when you're hanging out with a person how experienced they are, unless you're not experienced, in which case, ha, you're rolling the rape dice. Good luck. Eating them. And then we essentially just were playing drinking games in the hotel room. We were just having fun, talking with each other. Nothing crazy in particular. Now, one thing Casey said retrospectively, looking back at the scenario, is that I was flirting with her throughout the night and that she was uncomfortable with this because of our age difference. At the time, she was 18 and I was 26. She actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later, I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and to why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we are doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing, like drinking. And also the people that came, came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party. And with previous VidCon after parties, I even had problems getting into these events. There was one time where they didn't let me in because they couldn't confirm the legitimacy of my UK ID. They said they weren't trained to look at foreign IDs. So they didn't even let me in despite me being 26 at the time. And also since Katie's stream, I've gone back and reviewed texts from the time. And there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of their, one of their, one of their wrists. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of 21 plus year olds hanging out. I have no reason to think otherwise other than her Instagram bio, but I just didn't see it. But anyway, nothing actually particularly happened at this first night that we were hanging out. Everything was very friendly. We went our separate ways, and that's the end of the first night. And then the second time that we hung out was- I don't even like conceding on the age thing. Whether she's 18 or 21, it doesn't make that big of a difference in this story, unless you think that like the underage drinking is a huge point that needs to be dealt with, which I mean, I guess is kind of bad, but. The next night after this. So we wake up the next day, we do VidCon stuff. After we're done, that's the final day of VidCon. So VidCon is now technically over, but we have one more night in the hotel before we need to leave the next morning. And actually at this point, I actually had a friend that I had only known online meet up with me for the first time. And the whole time I'd known him, he lived in a different country. He was actually living in Japan. And I told him I was going to VidCon and he- What you're trying to do this weekend? Moves on Saturday? I think you're probably good to come, but possibly if we go somewhere, you won't be able to get in and that would be an L -L -O -L. I have an extra bed in my room so you can stay if you want. I'm busy until like 5 p.m., but should be good after that. Fuck yeah, I'll be there sat. He actually just happened to be in California at the same date, so the date's aligned. And we made plans to meet up. Now he arrived early evening, I think it was around 5, 6 p.m. We were just hanging out in my room. Dream messaged me, I'm bored. Can you come to my room? Let's hang out, essentially. That's what we did. Me and my friend that I just met <laughs> physically, I mean, I knew him online, went up to Dream's room and we were hanging out. And again- You think US laws on alcohol make sense or would, would you lower it to 18, 16 for some types of alcohol like EU? Uh, I, don't think the, I don't think the drinking age matters that much, or at least I haven't seen data that it does. I just wish we had a better culture around alcohol in the US. I feel like the culture is really bad for young people. The same scenario happens. From I think that like my broad view is that drugs are a massive like bonus enhancer to life. So if you want to get drunk, I like to get drunk in ways I think is super fun. I think MDMA is fun, LSD is fun, mushrooms are fun, smoking can be fun. All these things can be fun. Meth is fun. Uh, it can be fun. Um, all these things can be fun. But any time it becomes like a regular part of your routine, unless it's like a therapeutic drug, like it's prescribed to you for a medical condition, uh, if you feel like you have to smoke every night, if you feel like you have to drink every Friday, Saturday, if you feel like you need to smoke rocks, or if you feel like you have to do uh, like every single day or every weekend, I think that's something that's bad or risky. So when drugs are like a way to enhance parts of your life with an acceptable risk tolerance, right? You know that if you drink a lot, you can have these issues that pop up. Um, if you do this, you, this can happen, blah, 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 right? You, you, yeah, drugs are just like an enhancer. You, you, there's a thing that can make things a lot of fun and then there's a certain level of risk that you need to learn to have a tolerance for or be ready to counteract. Um, but, but when it becomes an incorporated part of your life where every Friday, Saturday, you've got to go and do blow, every Friday, Saturday, you've got to smoke weed or, or every night you're smoking weed or every day you're drinking, or whatever, that's, I think, what it's about, yeah. The night before, they are trying to get him to go out to another party that they were at. And same story, Dream didn't want to go. Isn't that risk easier to manage as an adult? It might be, but it's probably easier to manage at 24 than 21. It's probably easier to manage at 30 than 25. It's probably easier to manage, like, but I mean, it's, it's about where we draw the line. Okay, I can't believe you didn't come. This is devastating. The officer there, are you still there? L come, L, L, L. Do people really text like this when they're Zoomers? But it was open to them coming here. And again, that is what happened. But this time, their friends were actually all able to get in. I don't know how they did it. But Katie, her best friend, and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room, which had me, Dream, and my online friend that I just met. So eight people total in this room at this point. This night was very similar to the one before. We were just hanging out, playing games, drinking, and just having a good time. So something I actually want to point out before I continue with the- Oh, Nathan said that to- I didn't know until I heard Nathan say it out loud. What did he say? 
I think I like making your mom jokes at Nathan because now he's old enough and then <laughs> it's his mom. It's fucking it's funny. He said something like, ah, uh, oh, goofy ah mom. Or the way that he said it, I was like, holy shit. Goofy ah, that's like goofy ass. Like goofy ass movie, goofy ah movie or whatever. I just thought it was like a typo or something. I thought it was like a joke, like goofy ah or whatever. I didn't know it meant goofy ass until he, when he said it out loud. I was like, oh shit. I get it. I get it now. The rest of the story is the way that she phrases some things in her story. Instead of saying that her and the rest of her friends actually wanted to come to the hotel to hang out with us, she said that one friend was invited by Dream, but she didn't want to go alone. So then they decided to go along with her because they were willing to go anywhere. I just think it's important to note already that the story is slightly different from the reality of it. And I'll be mentioning this a few more times throughout the rest oh, of the Oh, Thanks for seeing these screenshots membership. from the text at the time that they were all trying to come to the hotel and it wasn't just a oh, we're willing to follow her, essentially. They were all in the group chat and part of the discussion to go to the hotel. I also chose to mention my online friend. It doesn't really add to the story, but she never mentioned him or the eighth person that she brought Can with. Can you move your chat as so blog in the screenshots? Nope. That's how it happened. Too lazy. And I want to make sure the story is straight. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more. And what are your thoughts on attachment style theory? Pretty sure there's a decent amount of research now to back up attachment style related stuff, right? I don't think it's just like a random like Myers-Briggs thing. I think that's pretty well researched at this point that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. Again, they had already been drinking at this party before they arrived to the hotel room. And they had also been the ones that were asking to play the drinking games. So instead of us insisting that we play it, they were actually the ones that were asking us. And you can see that in the screenshots here. They had actually texted multiple times specifically wanting to play this drinking game that we had played the night before. What's your attachment style? Probably the, is it called anxious avoidant? Or whatever whatever, one, whatever the avoidant one is. There's, or there might be multiple avoidant ones. Hold on. Oh, maybe dismissive avoidant? Dismissive avoidant. Dismissive avoidant adults uh, desire a high level of independence, often appearing to avoid attachment altogether. They view themselves as self-sufficient, invulnerable to attachment feelings, and not needing close relationships. They tend to suppress their feelings, dealing with conflict by distancing themselves from partners of whom they often have a poor opinion. Uh, adults like the interest of forming close relationships and maintaining emotional closeness with people around them. They have a great amount of distrust in others, but at the same time possess a positive model of self. They would prefer to invest in their own ego skills. Uh, they try to create high levels of self-esteem by investing disproportionately in their abilities or accomplishments. These adults maintain their positive views of self based on their personal achievements and competence rather than searching for and feeling acceptance from others. These adults will explicitly reject or minimize the importance of emotional attachment and passively avoid relationships when they feel as though they are becoming too close. They strive for self-reliance and independence when it comes to the opinions of others about themselves. They are very indifferent and are relatively hesitant to positive feedback from their fears. Dismissive avoidance can also be explained as the result of defensive deactivation of the attachment system to avoid potential rejection or genuine disregard for interpersonal closeness. Adults with dismissive avoidant patterns are less likely to seek social support than other attachment styles. They are likely to fear intimacy and lack confidence in others because of their distrust. They cannot be convinced that other people have the ability to deliver emotional support. Under a high cognitive load, however, dismissive avoidant adults appear to have a lowered ability to suppress difficult attachment-related emotions, as well as difficulty maintaining positive self-representations. This suggests that hidden vulnerabilities may underlie an active denial process. I think I fit this one the most, I think. Wouldn't you be more secure since you're not suppressing emotions? Um, I hear that, I think people with secure attachment patterns tend to seek out emotional support from others um, more than I think I do. I think, but I don't know, I have to go and check all this shit out again. At this point, I was pretty drunk, and so was basically everyone in this room. It was the last night of VidCon. VidCon's a pretty stressful time, and honestly, a lot of people are happy when it's over. Not that they didn't like it, but uh, it's just a stressful event. There's a lot that you have to do, and when it's over, you just, you're just happy and you want to celebrate. So at this point, we then moved to the couch. There was a couch in the room, and I sit next to Katie. She also says, looking back on the scenario, that she confused her nerves for excitement when I sit next to Katie. Free to talk for a few minutes. Um, After this, I can. Uh -huh. But again, at this moment in time, everything was friendly. Nothing sexual had happened. I'm just literally sitting next to her on the couch. And during this, she was laughing, smiling. She gave no indication that she was uncomfortable with me sitting this close to her. She also mentions that she was thinking about my age and that I was a lot older than her. Again, she was 18 and I was 26 at the time. And again, to clarify, I actually didn't know how old she was, despite her claiming that I did, just because it was in her bio. And it was clear to anyone there that she was not uncomfortable with me sitting next to her. And eventually two of the people that came to the hotel room left. So then it was just down to me, Dream, my online friend, Katie, Katie's best friend, and a sick mutual friend. Next she says, this is a quote, resorted to playing games on her phone to avoid the awkward situation. Now, I just don't see how this is the case. She's implying that she is using her phone to essentially escape, you know, in such an awkward scenario. 
that she's in, but that that's just not how it happened, and this is why. She brought up the phone game as kind of a point. The the game was honestly the central point of the interaction at this part of the night. It was a very social thing, you know, she was showing, she was moving the person the phone around. Does consent hold any meaning when there is influence at every corner? I don't know what that question means, but... We were all playing the game and bantering about it, just having fun with the game. So I, I Jordan Peterson tell you when he's going to upload the interview. Yes, it's on my calendar. They said Thursday at 4 EST. Like she resorted to it and was like using it in that context. She wasn't being awkward at all. There was no sense of uncomfortability from her. She was laughing and playing with everyone. And yeah, I'm just, I'm not really sure why she phrased it like this. We actually continued to send each other high score updates even weeks after the event. To add further context to this moment, we were all actually sitting on the- This is what I was curious about the DMs looked like afterwards. Couch that was in the hotel room, playing this game on her phone. Because I feel like with the way that she'd written that script for her stream, that felt like stuff that came from other people. Like she like reverse traumatized or retroactively traumatized herself or that other people told her she needed to be traumatized. Dusty, you mentioned said earlier, you asked, why would you assume a 26 year old wouldn't have sex with an 18 year old? It's because how they're seen as a kid and you gave further reasons like experience. I think in most environments, if everybody's like chilling and being flirty, I think most 26 year olds or 25 year olds would fuck probably 18, 19 year olds. That's, general, that's probably generally gonna be the case. People on Reddit might give you some soy reason why that isn't the case, but generally speaking, that's gonna be the case. Uh, and you're safer off in life assuming that that's gonna be the case. So like most girls that, most girls will tell you that they start getting hit on by guys when they turn like fucking 11 and 12. So like just, yeah, that's just something, but most women should be like intuitively aware of that. And during this, me and Katie were at the far end of the couch and we were cuddling together. We had been cuddling for, I'd say around an hour at this point, playing the game, talking and just having fun. And for clarity, I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. So with her statement where she's saying that she's resorting to playing games on her phone, I just don't really understand it. And I think that the picture that she's painting is really dark when in reality she seemed very happy with the situation was having a good time i also want to address a fact that she claimed that would confirm that i know her age she said that she had answered a question about her age during a drinking game and we were talking about sex and that she admitted to everyone in the room that she was one of my friends is 24 like that it's wild to me honestly what do you even have in common with them i mean if it's just hooking up the standards for like it's not like they're dating dating would probably be a lot different i don't know if a lot of 25 26 year old people would date 18 year olds that gets that's a lot that's a much different area that the picture that she's painting is really dark, when in reality she seemed very happy with the situation, was having a good time. I also want to address a fact that she claimed that would confirm that I know her age. She said that she had answered a question about her age during a drinking game, and we were talking about sex, and that she admitted to everyone in the room that she was 18 and a virgin at the time. I just don't remember this happening. I'm not saying this to just pretend like it didn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I did not hear it happen. We're not just all sitting down and not moving. It's a, you know, it's a chaotic environment. I could have been getting a drink. I could have been talking to someone else. You supported my argument again. Would a guy hit on someone they think is underage? I mean, it depends on the ages and it depends on the environment, but maybe like if you took like a 20 year old dude at like a bar or at a party and there was like a 17 year old girl or a 16 year old girl, probably, yeah, probably in general, I think it can happen, yeah. I just did not know that that was said. Another quote from her stream I want to address, she says, there was more alcohol in the room. I'm not giving you what's right or wrong. I'm just telling you this is like what happens and you should be aware of it. But like I said, I think these internet spaces like poison people's minds and these internet spaces, I think make I think these internet spaces make people seem dumber than they actually are, especially women. Um, I think that most women intuitively know this. I think generally when women are fucking guys that they shouldn't be or getting in trouble in real life, usually it's because they're like infatuated with them or something stupid is happening that they know better than, but they're like for some other reason, right? And then guys act dumb too. But I, I'm trying to think if like, if a woman at 16 or 17 was like, oh, I didn't know this guy had a sexual interest in me at all, usually, ah, fuck, it's been so long since I've been a child. I feel like if a 16, 17 year old girl is saying shit like that, oh, I didn't know the guy wanted to do this, is because the guy is either grooming her or love bombing her, not just because a guy walked up to her and hit on her at a bar. But it feels like when you talk to girls online, like when you're in this e-girl space, the women all become fucking retards, where the woman will be like, yeah, I was 18 and the guy was petting me and giving me drinks and I didn't know at all that he, that just feels like some retarded shit that people say because it's on stream. I don't know if in the real world, if the average, even young woman, thinks or acts like this. But it's been a long time since I've been in that. And like the youngest women I talk to now are usually like 20, 21. So I don't know what like 15, 16 year olds think. I don't fucking know. I don't know. And then the people that reach out to me are always gonna skew in a different pattern than like the normal person anyway, so. And we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games. They had already been drinking before they arrived. They were drunk. And the way this is phrased, it makes us out to look like we're kind of preying on them and like forcing them to drink when they didn't want to when that's not the case. And as I mentioned earlier, they were even the ones asking to play the drinking games via the texts before they had even arrived. So then this is when her most important claim happens. I'm just gonna read the quote. She says, out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no and still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us. Is it really that complicated or is it clout driven? 
I don't want to say it's clout driven, but I, the, like the online space is just add a whole other dimensionality. Like in an ordinary friend group, people aren't thinking like, do I need to make a public statement about this? Do I need to go on Facebook or Instagram and make a post to let everybody, like that's just not a thing that most women or men or anybody, this is not a thing that most people are thinking about in like ordinary friend spaces. Um, but online, like everybody feels like they have to fucking make a statement about everything or talk publicly about everything. Like, including my best friend, that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked it to be. Again, as I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we'd been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around Oh, half an this too. Okay, that kind of changes things as well. Or until I started moving my hand further up, and the way it's phrased just makes it seem like it happened pretty instantly and pretty quickly. There was nothing quick about it, it was very slow, and I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. Me and Katie were very touchy, very cuddly, and very slowly got more intimate. I've always been overly cautious with consent, and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator, and I think that's just the way I am and just the way it should be. Nothing came out of nowhere. Everything progressed very slowly throughout the night. And also, before I continue, I want to make it clear that the furthest anything ever got was under the shirt touching and cuddling. Now, obviously, people don't typically ask if everything is okay, even such as touching someone's waist under their shirt before they do it. But in this case, I was extremely slow, and she was engaging with me the entire time, laughing, cuddling with me, and even playfully fighting me for the game that we were playing. Again, the quote that she said, he disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no. She's implying that I'm, it's with malicious intent, and that she coughed out a no, would also imply that I should be able to tell that she was uncomfortable with it. She says, later, he made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the game I was playing. Now, I actually remember this quite vividly. I remember she was playing the game, and there were parts where it would be very easy to lose if you were distracted. And she's right, I did do that. There were points where she was playing the game, and she was at a point where it was easy for her to mess up, and I would, for example, tickle her or like, squeeze her, and I, when I did this, she would laugh, she would turn around and smile at me, or she would play fight with me because I just made her lose the game. She also says how, quote, I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness would make me disappear. Now, to reiterate, any time that I did this, it was met with her either smiling, laughing, play fighting with me, and there was no reason for me to believe that she was uncomfortable with it. She was not not moving. She was not not speaking. Of course, I don't believe that silence is consent. I just want to make sure that it is abundantly clear. She was visibly and physically responding well to everything that we were doing. I also want to comment on how she said that she had to stand up after many minutes for, for it to stop. She did get up multiple times throughout the night. For example, to go to the bathroom, to get a drink. Also, when her friends left, she got up to say goodbye to them, and she would come back to the same scenario. I also just want to point out that her best friend was here during this whole process, then afterwards did leave. And I think it is important to note that she made the choice to stay behind for many hours more. And as I mentioned before, she did get up, say goodbye to them, and came back. We were even talking about staying up to wait until 11 a.m., which was the checkout time of the hotel. Since it was the final day, we were like, oh, I don't know if we want to go to sleep for a few hours, might as well just stay up. But So she's responding positively to his advances, yet later claims it's sexual assault. Destiny, this is the example you were looking for. It always is. This is uh, the consensual act turned great. I mean, I would just be more explicit. I would usually talk about this stuff beforehand because why risk it? But like, I mean, it sounds like he's generally pursuing this as a normal person would, and she's generally being receptive. Like, if she's getting up and coming back over and over again, it's probably she. He probably has like the physical green light. But it also sounds like nothing even really happened tonight. Like, they didn't actually fuck or he didn't even finger her or anything. So I don't even know. I don't know how this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's not what ended up happening. And so this time that Katie says that this is a quote. I went to leave, and the older guy then decide to leave too. This is phrased in a way that makes me look kind of creepy, to be honest. She's basically saying she left, so I decided to leave too, which is not the case. What actually happened is Dream had decided he was too tired. Do you think the YouTube Minecraft space is just not good for anything sexual in public? Probably not. I think because the ages skew so young and the people's like ideas about sex and everything are so retarded and a lot of the people are virgins that have no experience anyway, it's just not a good community for any of the stuff to be talked about, positively, negatively, or anything at all. I had, and was going to bed. So the night was over and we all left. She then goes on to tell a story about the elevator and how I joked about it being broken to try to get it to go in with me. So Katie actually- This is like, this is gonna be me really negatively loading this, but I'm curious if she tried to date him afterwards and he said no or something, or I'm curious why, like who hyped her up to come in out this guy? Somebody hyped her up on this, I'm curious who. Had her own hotel room on the same floor as Dream. So she actually didn't have to take the elevator. She walked me to the elevator when she didn't have to and said goodnight to me, which was nice of her. I did joke with her about coming in the elevator by pretending that it was broken. I would essentially, I went into the elevator, the doors closed, and I would press the doors open button to make it open again. I did this a few times, and she didn't go along with it, which I respectfully took, obviously, and ended up just going down to my room. But yeah, she she didn't have to take the elevator, yet she chose. Chud Logic invented the term yes lighting for hyping a girl up like that. Yes lighting? <laughs> okay. She's friends with a rival Minecraft group that's been trying to paint this narrative about Dreams group for months now. Ooh, if that's true. Walk with me to the elevator to say goodnight to me which I think is interesting given how she's saying how she was so upset with her. But also I think these comments are her looking back on the night and not her actual feelings at the time. That's f***ing hilarious if that's true. You like, you send your women to the other group to f*** 
them or do something with them and then you bring them back with allegations and you like fight that way in the, in the gang of public opinion or in the court of public opinion <laughs> ended up just going Jesus. down to my room yeah she she didn't have to take the elevator yet she chose to walk with me to the elevator to say goodnight to me which i think is interesting given how she's saying how she was so upset with her but also i think these comments are her looking back on the night and not her actual feelings at the time and that's essentially the end of the story this is actually the last time i've seen her in person was just as those elevator doors closed we messaged for a bit after uh through instagram dms and snapchat and our, the way that we talked to each other was always pretty ban banterous. For example, after the first night that we hung out, but before the second, she'd actually texted me and said, you better not be in Dream's room tonight. If you come to Dream's uh, hotel again tonight, I'm shooting your leg, so don't. Oh, awkward, I'm in his room now. You're not gonna do shit, thumbs down. Or I'm gonna shoot your leg. Obviously, she's not gonna shoot my leg. It's just, we're just messing with each other. And I actually responded to her and said, well, guess what? I'm actually here right now. And yeah, after this, we texted for a bit, uh, sometimes daily, sometimes we'd take a few days break, even a few weeks at some point. And at some point after VidCon, we were actually both in London at the same time. And she and she let me know this through her DMs. Now, I will say she didn't come out outright and say, I'm in London, but she did say that she had gone to a place. And she, and she- Shut the way business, I can literally book you. What? Yeah, I'm gonna need $10 for this combo, please and thanks. I'm gonna pay one cent for this stupid combo. You are a bad business, yet you're still talking to my ass dick. Know this through her DMs. Now, I will say she didn't come out outright and say, I'm in London, but. You can't say dickhead. That's only for English people to say. I just drank at Simmons last night. I'd say I'm British enough. Oh shit, maybe you're British. What the fuck? Well, I drank at Simmons Bar last night. You probably don't even know what that is, so you're less British than me. What are you doing in England? Ruth said Simmons Bar was gay, so da da da. I'm living life the British way, partying, clubbing, etc. Using gays and salt. She did say that she'd gone to a place that was known to be a London thing. And I commented on that and said, and asked what she was doing in London. And just to clarify, we did not meet her whilst in London, nor make plans to do so. She was always extremely friendly to me. I was friendly to her. And honestly, I was very shocked to hear her say the things that she did say during her stream. When I first opened up her stream, it was, it was after she'd already streamed it, but not long after. So people hadn't yet made the connection that it was relating to me. And when watching it, I was like, I was actually interested. I was, I was thinking, okay, what's this going to be about? And then when she started saying more and more details, I realized, wait, this is, this is about me. I was, I was very, very confused, very shocked. And didn't quite know what to think given i had no impression of any wrongdoing throughout this whole relationship that i had with her not at all like it was if anything it was the opposite i thought we had a pretty good relationship despite the fact that we actually hadn't talked in a while i thought if i had seen her in in real life again everything would be fine and we would be friends it was actually around this point after the after bitcoin had finished and we were messaging that i found out her age and since then i never pursued anything going forward and i essentially stopped messaging her her last message to me was august 1st 2023 and i haven't replied to her since then after i watched her stream I was pretty confused. I didn't understand how her account of the story had been so different from what actually happened. A lot of the facts that she said just didn't happen at all or were phrased in ways that just make me look as bad as possible. Saying things like, um, I insisted on her playing drinking games or that she was frozen in place or that she was scared. She was having fun. She was enjoying herself. She was showing this with her body language, with the way that she smiled, the way that she laughed and just her overall general demeanor. Now, one thing that I think is very important to differentiate here. How was she convinced to do this? I don't understand how this happens. Um, in the, um, in the super mega group, it was just like, uh, I can't speak cause I don't know the group dynamics, but it'll basically be somebody shares a story. Somebody asks for like, well, did anything bad or weird happen? And somebody like, well, I don't know. I was kind of drinking. And then there will be this, I don't know how to explain this, like collective, um, this collective delusion or thing that will happen when somebody starts hyping up details and then people start getting it in their head, like, oh shit, well maybe this wasn't okay, blah, blah, blah. And then like, once you, once that like, um, once the, the boulder starts rolling down the hill there, it's like, it's over. Like people will drive themselves up to some insane, yeah, yas lighting, yeah. Is that I do believe that she regrets being affectionate with me. And that, that really does make me feel terrible. I never want to make anyone feel uncomfortable or regret their interactions with me or anything along those lines, regardless of if it's sexual or not. And I'm truly, really sorry if I contributed towards that. But what's important to differentiate is that she was uncomfortable with this after the fact and not during. She says, quote, at the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that it had happened to me. I was excited to be around such big creators to be at that convention in general. Now, actually, I've had a similar scenario to this where I was in a sexual, I had a sexual experience with someone where in the moment I was perfectly happy with it happening. But then afterwards, I regretted it. And I'm not saying this to get any form of sympathy. I'm not looking for that. That is not the case at all. I'm simply saying this because I can see the similarities in the situation. Now, I'm not mad at the person that I was in this sexual experience with at all. I have no negative thoughts on them. I simply did not like how it ended up. And if I could go back and not do it, I wouldn't have. I wanted to do it in the moment, but then change my mind later, which is completely valid. You're completely allowed to feel that way. But what isn't okay, and I think is just completely unfair, is to act as if I am the bad person in the scenario because you changed your mind later. I also wanna separate this from abuse and 
certain scenarios that other people have dealt with recently or just in general, I think it's completely fine to come to terms with your abuse over time and realize that it was bad for you and a terrible situation to be in and to then look badly back on that person. That is completely valid, but this is different. Again, this all happened within a four hour period, three, four hour period, and I was not given any sign of discomfort, unhappiness, or anything along those lines. And again, it was the opposite of that. She was happy, she was laughing, she was smiling, and as far as I know, everyone else in the room would have felt the same at the time. So now what I'm thinking is, why would she come out and say it like this? Why is she saying this? Now, I don't think she's purposely being malicious or trying to hurt me or ruin my career or anything like that. I also think it's boring. Like, I don't need these, like, and I know people have to do it, I guess, it's part of the PR, but like, I don't need like a PSA on like rape bad, trauma bad, like after every single one of these two. Like, just like give your shit, say this is dumb, and then move on. Like, we don't need the 50 million. Yeah. What I do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that completely despises me and my friend group. And this is quite a specific scenario that probably doesn't really happen that much, especially publicly. So it, it's kind of weird. it's kind of hard to talk about it. But I think after VidCon, she obviously had told some of her friends about what happened. Whether or not that was in a negative connotation, I don't know. I was part of these conversations, of course. But she clearly told them about the scenario. And when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends, they're obviously going to look on this poorly. To add context to this, she had oh, okay, to okay. So this told some of her friends about what happened. Whether or not that was in a negative connotation, it's kind of weird. it's kind of hard to talk about it. But I think after VidCon, she obviously had told some of her friends about what happened. Whether or not that was a negative connotation, I don't know. I wasn't part of these conversations, of course. But she clearly told them about the scenario. And when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends, they're obviously gonna look on this poorly. To add context to this, she actually mentions in her stream, I would just quote her. She says, I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby on the way, and they were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and, I, and it was an eerie feeling like they could sense something was wrong. Now this person is in Katie's friend group, and they were concerned that a group of five people were going up to Dream's room to join three additional people, which is an, an interesting concern to have. I actually have heard from another source that overheard this conversation and thought it was quite strange that she was Worried about this. I think wow, Spitmeister, thanks for gifting what's up. Seems very likely that after eight months of you being around friends that hate me and my friends and constantly talking badly about us publicly as well and privately, I don't know what they say privately, but can't be any better than what they say publicly. Obviously, that is going to affect the way that you view the experience and it's going to make you look at it differently. You're going to second guess it. You're going to be thinking about it. And clearly, it changed the way that she thought about it. And I think it's completely unfair to judge me and my actions based on how you feel about it now, eight months later, versus how you felt at the time. Because at the time, you were not uncomfortable with it. And I know I'm repeating myself a million times, but I have to. You were smiling, happy. happy. This actually, this happened eight months ago. This is so stupid. Playing along with it. Oh my God. And that's all I really have to say on the matter. Still keep supporting victims. <laughs> L rape. Hold on, let me use the restroom and go to a sippy sippy story story real quick. L rape, please. L rapes in chat, okay? L rapes in chat. Yo, how's it going, Steve? Did he fucking leave? Wait, as soon as I get here, he leaves? All right, well, that's fine. Uh, Destiny just sent me a message. He said, rape good, consent bad. I just want to let you guys know. Uh, <laughs> oh my god a uh, little announcement the destiny documentary is going to be out on the 20th it's coming okay it's coming it's done it's ready to go i've just got a video to post first sponsorship obligation however it is coming it's coming out it's done it's two hours and 40 minutes long and uh you guys are gonna like it that being said can we get some uh towers in chat i think you guys know what i'm talking about you know, just like one or two towers. Um, maybe of the twin or tilted variety. But really, you guys know what I'm talking about, okay? You guys know what I'm talking about. Don't be shy. He's taking a long piss. Was this gay guy washing his hands? Hello? Now? Wait, who the fuck is Hello? in here? Oh my god. How's it going? Hi. Dude, okay. I see you watching the fucking, you're doing the rape review right now. Yeah. Um, so the craziest thing about this to me is like, so he catches her in a clear lie by omission where she doesn't say they were cuddling, right? Mm -hmm. She didn't say that at all in her explanation. He, got, he catches her clearly. He points out the fact that her friends are like coming for him. Like he has a lot. He has some decent screenshots showing that like she continued talking to him after like yeah. in, in a way that was like more than just like cordial. Like it, was, it wasn't like she had to message him. She chose to, right? Sure. And this morning... George posted a statement, like apologizing again, saying, since reading Katie's new post, my perspective on that night and my conclusion is massively changed as she introduced new information I was not aware of. I have much more I will say, but for now, Katie, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I really hope you can hear my words and try to understand that I did not have any bad intentions. That does not change the fact you were hurt. I will be saying more soon. Like this guy yesterday somehow believed he was falsely accused. 
and after her fucking post where the only thing that she says is like oh wait wait well, wait i haven't read this post yet. asked me for consent i haven't read yes. this I, I can send you the post but it's fucking is it's it like what she retarded. tweeted yeah, she she tweeted out like it's it's like three tweets with like four pictures in each of her giant text posts. Okay, can I let me just let me read. Can I do this real quick? Is that okay? Of course. Okay. Because maybe this changes everything. For now, this is what I have to say. He admitted to touching me, that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent. In my mind, the conversation is over. He said silence any consent yet. Never got verbal consent. Uh, he chose to move to a sexual act on the couch where everyone was hanging out without asking. I don't know how these two facts coexist. How can I consent? when there was no question. How can I consent when drunk? Um, uh, I prepared proof on the idea that he wouldn't admit to it. <clears throat> um, that he wouldn't admit to it, that he would deny touching me or being there, but he admitted it, that I was drunk, that he t um, Okay, I don't care about this. Is there anything? Insta DMs, they were all fine. Like it's on the stream. I don't know my age, my bio. I don't. One care of the craziest this. things she says in this is, um, she's like, "Yes, we were cuddling, but I don't see how cuddling is sexual or how it would, uh, you know, have anything to Wait, do with where, which, me. Wait, where? Which? Oh, we Ask cuddled. That. A lot of the touch was initiated by him, probably not realizing it. I mean, he was literally spooning me from my left as I faced it ghosty to my right. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but was just me being drunk. Everyone on the couch was doing the same thing, all drunk, close together. But I get it, I was drunk. I didn't think cuddling auto automatically meant it to turn sexual. I didn't know it was an invitation. I wasn't gonna push him off in front of everyone. He took it a step further in front of everyone, all because he assumed things, but she got up and got back over and over again, right? Yes, she, she did. Like, is this not completely retarded? Like, yes, it is, this whole thing is completely retarded. Have you ever, have you ever like cuddled with a girl that like, I mean, I'm not saying you're necessarily gonna fuck. Like, if he like took out his and ripped a hole in her pants and just stuck it in and was like going gorilla mode, like that would be one thing. But like, it's a natural evolution. Like you're talking, you're flirting, then you move to cuddling. Yeah, of course. Then, like, that's he, yeah. That's he, what he it seemed like stomach. when I looked at like the escalation of things. It seemed like he was basically like kind of moving in that direction. Yeah. But everything seemed yeah, exactly. like she said it took an hour. Like and it's yeah. You know, like keep in mind t also nothing has happened yet, right? Illuminator, thanks for the no. popular subs. Nobody's like getting penetrated like even digitally. Nobody got like penetrated. nobody. Yeah. Like she could have also left at any point in time. She could have just left the room. Well, she and she home. got up and went back over and over again too. Exactly. She seems. got up to use the bathroom and then went back and cuddled with him more. Like, what the fuck? What is wrong with this person? Like, she could have chosen to cuddle with someone else if it really had, like, no tie to anything, right? But mm -hmm. but she chose to cuddle with him specifically. Like, this is insane. This is insane. Everybody's calling this, like, rape or sexual assault, saying he's an abuser, she's a victim. And now he is, like, cowering in fear subsequently after his response wasn't the best received. And now, we, like, fucking Casey Tron's out here going crazy. All these people, like, it's, it's insane. It's insufferable. Tom, 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 you don't understand. Uh, if she'd gone and sat next to anyone else, he might have been embarrassed. That's the other thing. Yeah, she's like, well, I didn't want to embarrass him. It's like, okay, well, this is just your fault at this point. Like, this is nobody's fault but your own. I didn't want to embarrass the guy who I felt was sexually assaulting me. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? No, you were fine with it. Honestly, I think I think what he said in his video is, is real. I think it was mostly regret. She hadn't been touched by anyone before. She ended up, you know, getting flirty with a big YouTuber. She enjoyed it. Afterwards, nothing really happened. He stops talking to her. She freaks the fuck out. Uh, and that's like, you can draw a through line with this. Like, you can clearly see this happening in real time throughout this entire situation. Yeah. Having literally any other take is fucking insane. Why did but he, uh, wait, so do. why did he tweet? Well, now he fucked himself. If he tweeted out some huge fucking apology. Why because the he's a fucking pussy who deserves to actually be canceled now. For wait, wait, up yeah. Now, is he, now, well, hold on. Is he part of like a Minecraft group or whatever? Yes. Then that's probably him why, because that him, group... Him, him uh, and Dream are Dream, boys. Dream had his back. Oh. Dream had his back. Well, he did. Apparently, Dream had a fucking, uh... He had Twitter Meltdown space. Meltdown Twitter space. Yeah. Why did he cry? I still don't understand. <sighs> okay, well, why? then, the, well, I mean, like, well, I don't feel bad for the guys, then, because they all, like, create this culture as well by feeding into it and apologizing, so it's also their fault, so fuck them all, I guess. Like, you're of literally course. creating the monster that's eating you later, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, they made their bed. It's, uh... It's just like, it's insane to watch this happen in real time. Like, why even defend these people at this point? Like, Nick was, um, Nick DiOrio tweeted out that clip of you when Pokey apologized, being like, oh man, she's gonna, you know, cower to the mob. Okay. And that's how it feels like for all of us right now. Like, we pick this shit apart. He posts like a good response. We defend him. And then now. Well, there's not even anything to pick apart. Mob. Like, even the original accusation is just like kind of weak. It's weak, it has no proof, and yeah. his, his response, in my opinion, like, pretty much bodies it. Well, no, like, even like if, 
I just want to be ultra clear. Even if what she said originally had happened verbatim, I don't think anything wrong has even happened at that point, except for maybe underage drinking. Like, even if everything she said, even if there was no cuddling and he was like well, kind of testing. I think what she said initially was like she was just sitting and then all of a sudden he put his hand up her shirt. Like that's what she said. Oh, was it? Oh, because I thought she said it happened over an, an hour. She said that they were they were like talking over the course of an hour or whatever. And then at some point he just like, like she's just sitting there next to him and he's like, are you ticklish? And puts his hand up her shirt right away. Oh, okay. I don't know. Like, it just, like that happens. Yeah, like, this... like that's obviously not. That's not. If, if you if you've never touched anyone before, you've never touched someone. You're not flirting at all, which is the way that she's made it seem like it. You know, it was going down. And then someone puts it, puts their hand up your shirt. That is weird, right? Yeah, she that would be weird. I guess it seemed that like just wasn't how she I was being forced to drink or being encouraged to drink as an 18 year old. Oh yeah, but I never. Yeah. I just always assume that's a lie. <laughs> I hear it. So there, are, there are clearly messages of them being like, <laughs> "Let's play the drinking game." Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. It was also that the guys brought up the drinking game, which was a lie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, anything else, sir? Because this sounds fucking retarded. But it's it also their fault, too. They shouldn't like, be like, they apologize. So they, they, they're they empowering these groups to do these same things over and over again in the future. Yes. So. It's going to happen again and again. Yeah, of course. These communities yeah. are fucking retarded. But they have what, to, at some point. the point of bowing down? Well, the point is you get to keep a larger audience. But, I mean, what they need to do is just say, like, hey, listen, some people might disagree with this or whatever, but, like, this is some retarded shit. And then you just you lose some fans, you cultivate a better fan base, and you move on. But when you try to aim yourself to be family-friendly, what you're, you're aiming for maximum audience penetration. You want the biggest audience that you can possibly get. And in doing so, you're going to end up making some absolutely absurd compromises, and this is one of them. So as long as they're trying to be essentially sellouts and, and work a crowd as hard as they can and get as many fans as they can, then, yeah, this is the result, which is But if what you're though. admitting to is sexual assault, these people aren't going to come back to your channel. They're not going to keep watching you just because you're honest. I mean, That's well, but the, the apology, too. As bad as it is. Guilt. They it, don't think it's anything else. As, as bad as it is, um, it would be even worse to not accept your mistakes, maybe, right? Would it? To fight? I don't know. Yeah, why would you want to fight against raping an 18-year-old who's getting drunk? Because like, they're being falsely accused? Yeah, but all the people are, she's just going to say over and over again, I was 18 and drunk. I was 18 and drunk. I was 18 well, and drunk and you didn't ask for anyway? consent? If you admit to it especially? Cause then well, yeah, but at least once you admit to it, maybe you can move on. That's in their point of view. I don't know. No. Uh, yeah, he, this guy's fucking done. It's over for this dude, okay? He admitted that he raped an 18-year-old in every Minecrafter's eyes now. In Dream, who just like finished up with a bunch of false allegations that he had to disprove, now he has something on his record these people can point to and be like, your friend did this, you covered it up. Like it's retarded. Okay, these yeah. people are fucking, they're all, they're all, I, I like in my mind, I thought they were like smart or something, I don't know. I guess I'm wrong. Your mom was 18 and drunk, true dude, base. 1,800 pounds, more like in Destiny's case. All right. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I don't know. Just cancer. Uh, oh, yeah. I was telling the chat, the Destiny documentary is going to be out in one week. Oh, so boy. It's done. Wow. It's finished. Two hours and 40 minutes. Okay. You can put it on in the background and leave for three hours of your stream. It's going to be hype. Based. Um. Okay. All right. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. See ya. Find that somebody send that dream call to Destiny so I can hear it, okay? Okay. Thank you. Bye. What's all this other shit I've opened up? I just made you come here with one finger. I just like to deal with my fist. Oh, God. Okay, you get your uh, I don't know about it after that one. <laughs> what? I just made you come here with one finger. I just like to deal with my fist. Oh, God. Okay, you get your snap? Uh, I don't know about it after that one. <laughs> Jesus. Who is this guy? I don't care who you are. If you haven't watched, or if you've watched George's Apology, I want you to watch this. And um, I asked Katie if she thought that uh, this was okay to say. I have complete permission from Katie to speak about this whenever she's drunk, uh, usually. Uh, she's very cheery and she loves her friends and so when I saw her down I knew it was for a reason um, I walked over to her and uh, I comforted her and I said Katie like what's wrong why are you why are you sad I don't you know we, we're with all our friends what's, what's the matter and um, something uh, I've never really spoken about this is that Katie uh, as I hugged Katie Katie like uh, through tears um, like tried to cough up that um, George McFound had assaulted her and um, and I, I, I never wanted to bring it up to her because I, I could see how sensitive it was. And I knew she told it to me while she was under the influence. But um, it's just wrong. It's fucking wrong that uh, they're trying to use their platform. 
How have you not done coverage on the Supreme Court ruling on Trump? That's kind of huge. Wait, what Supreme Court ruling on Trump? Was there a new one? ...to make this narrative like Katie's mind changed. Somebody changed Katie's mind after the fucking assault to make them look bad. I was there three weeks after Katie was assaulted by George Lafayette four fucking weeks or whatever. And she cried in my fucking arms. This 19-year-old girl, 18-year-old girl. She cried in my fucking arms because of... Oh, he's that one guy. He's the... Because you never know guy. He's that guy. What you did, George found I'm serious. I'm fucking serious. No one had changed her mind. No one. She, this was a fucking horrible thing to have happened to her. And to, and to try, to try and use me. My friends or anybody else as a scapegoat for your fucking sexual abuse is disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. Okay? I, I, my friend cried in my fucking arms about this and you're on stream denying it all, denying the fucking hurt that you caused to her. Isn't this like the, isn't this, you're supposed to do the, uh... I need one with no... With no lyrics. Do these all have lyrics? Midwest emo pop punk instrumentals. Close enough. My friends, or anybody else, as a scapegoat for your f***ing sexual abuse is disgusting. It's f***ing disgusting, okay? I, I, my friend cried in my arms about this and you're on stream denying it all uh, denying the heart that you caused to her you are disgusting people you and all of your abuse sympathizer friends you are all horrible seriously you are so wrong for trying to displace this f***ing, uh, this sexual assault onto anyone but yourselves you are a 26 year old man 27 now trying to f***ing put the blame on 18 year olds that you don't no! What the f is wrong? Wow, and it blacks out even more dramatic. Rest in peace. My friends! Or okay, can we. Are we done with this? Please. Oh my god, this is so stupid. <sighs> okay, August wants me to watch this bullshit. I know there's. A lot of people that think that I'm so calculated and everything that I do is so planned out and that, uh, you know, I'm just, I think right now that I'm being manipulative and I'm trying to, you know, I care about just... my image or but I care. Sorry. I care about people. And I want people to talk to me if they have anything, any problem. What? Three more minutes. Okay. Doing two was mid. They missed all the most high impact With lines anyone. from the book, and it's not like Frank Herbert's Including writing myself. is great. Fanboys need a reality check. I was kind of disappointed, to be honest. I also hope you're well, Steve. Thanks. I never want to hurt anybody. I never want to do too bad. I never want to do evil. I never want to contribute to anyone's life in. A negative way. And I'm sorry. I just want to 
reiterate that and I final what I'm just to say because I feel it necessary to say because it is what I believe and it is how I feel I think that George left that night feeling the same way that I did and I think that that's just as fucked up as the fact that I didn't know. I think that the problem lies in that. Um, what? What? What are we? What has happened in two and a half minutes? This is. George Gee. didn't know, and he should have known. Why do I care about any of this? He should have known. And I think that's something that he has to accept and reflect on himself, um, and realize. I think that. He has stuff to say that he will. I don't know exactly what it will be, but what he'll say. Um, 